but not all of these funds. So still, this library is going to have some really hard work to do this year, just as many of us do, in learning how to incorporate these cuts into our operations. But at the same time, using LSTA funds from an outside source, this university library, the Joyner Library here at ECU, has initiated a new project called Ensuring Democracy Through Digital Access, partnering with UNC Chapel Hill and with us at the State Library. Um, this project will provide online, digitize and provide online access to approximately 2,300 volumes of historic state publications, providing an historical view of the development of our state in the 19th and early 20th centuries. This is a monumental undertaking and an enormously important project that many, many of our state's universities, researchers all around the world will benefit from. I would also like to mention that in spite of all the terrible cuts we at the state level have suffered, capital funding was still awarded this year to North Carolina State University for the James B. Hunt Library. This library is described as the intellectual and social heart of the rapidly growing population of North Carolina State's Centennial Campus, embodying the essence of the campus as a community built around knowledge. NC State seeks nothing less than to create the best learning and collaborative space in the country. Aspirations. Meanwhile, our community colleges are developing new curricula to support these 21st century industries we've just been talking about, like aviation, biotechnology, data centers. Last year, Google sent representatives from the Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute to their headquarters in Mountain View, California, to learn not only the skill sets that employees will need in actually doing the work at the data center in Lenore, but also the workplace skills that are needed in the technology industry's team-based work environment. It's a totally different concept from the traditional manufacturing environment. In May, the research campus in Kannapolis announced the groundbreaking for Rowan Cabarrus Community College building on their campus to create the Associate in Applied Science degree for jobs in biotechnology research and development. Very exciting. However, just when it is needed the most to train and retrain workers for our new economy, the community college system has suffered dramatic cuts and their learning resource centers are struggling to acquire the materials needed to support these new curricula. The average cut in instructional resources allotments for the 58 community college learning resource centers across North Carolina is 25%, but that's the average. There is one whose cut is as high as 41%, and others are 37%, 35%, 33%. This is devastating to library collections. And while public libraries across North Carolina are struggling with cuts in their budgets and reductions in their staff and hours, the American Library Association reports that nationally public library use is at an all-time high. In North Carolina, we have 77 public library systems, of which 53 are single counties, and the other 47 counties are members of multi-county regional libraries. We also have 10 independent municipal libraries. The Chapel Hill Public Library, of which I was once the director, is one of those 10 independent municipal libraries. And these are the libraries that meet the eligibility requirements for state aid to libraries the funding which I am happy to report our state legislature held steady this year in spite of the economic conditions in our state, which says a lot for the work that our public library directors have done with our legislature. This seems like a wonderful gain, even though it's holding steady rather than a loss. And we were very, very excited to be able to to maintain that level because so many of our libraries have lost funding at the local level. 
during periods of economic downturn, public library use always increases. The local public library becomes a free source of reading and entertainment for the family. In this crisis, I love this, I've heard stories of some public libraries having to take reservations for story hour. There is such a demand for the use of the library. But now, even more importantly, public libraries have become job search and business development centers as never before. In today's marketplace, the majority of employers require that applications be submitted online with an email address for correspondence. This all seems perfectly natural to us. You and I sit in front of a computer all day every day. We work online. We were early adopters of online. We know uh, we have a much higher level of skills, I think, than you would find in any general population unless, of course, you know, they're teenagers. But, you know, that's a different story. <laughs> different story. This is our bread and butter, what we do every day. But imagine what it would be like for a person like 60-year-old Annie who walked into the Rowan County Public Library one day with some hesitation and having, after having lost her job at Haynes Mills after 33 years, Annie had never touched a computer in her life. She didn't know how to use the mouse, much less how to apply for a job online. But with the help of their well-trained library staff and with computer training programs of the type that go on in our libraries, public libraries, and in our community colleges, all across our state, Annie and all of those like her are finding the assistance they need to get a new job. Book budgets, library staff, and library hours are being cut. The people's lives and livelihoods are being saved by our public libraries and our community college libraries and our university libraries, public and private, every day.